The heroin epidemic pulls no punches at whom or what it affects, nor does it seem to care about where those effects are felt. Yeah, and locally that issue is presenting itself in several different and very disturbing ways. Our Morning Edition's Alex Flippen learned about this and more in our News Press Now special report. The heroin was just you know, we heard about it but never saw it. And right now, there's just an increase of flood. The burglaries, the robberies, it's here until we can actually really do something about it. Our drug problem is, is from the, the poorest of the poorest to the richest of the rich. According to the Centers for Disease Control, heroin use among young adults has more than doubled in the last decade, and heroin-related overdose deaths nearly quadrupled. And what was once identified with larger urban areas has now landed firmly in our own backyard. We have people, you know, that we've identified who are bringing heroin to St. Joseph or who are here and distributing it. Captain Sean Colley with the Buchanan County Drug Strike Force says in the first 15 years of his career, he recalls coming across heroin once. That, unfortunately, has changed. In a week, we'll see it a couple times a week, um, which is scary to think that that's you know, readily available in our community. It was the only city that we've ever been uh, to that they acknowledged that the issue was here. Addiction specialist Joe Zygmunt. It started in the city. We started hearing about it more in like November, December of last year. Um, and as you you know hear today is it's it's in the St. Joe also. Collie and Zygmunt see the nationwide and local heroin epidemic from two sides. One working to prevent the drug from coming in the other treating those already addicted. But each places the blame on the same thing. The prescription pill problem has uh, shot to epidemic levels. When they're able to find the prescription pills, they're turning to the heroin. Zygmunt says the high provided by heroin mimics that of commonly prescribed painkillers. It's the difference between opiates and opioids, and the body doesn't really know much of a difference at all. Basically, the body's a, a very amazing thing. It breaks it down the same. It breaks it to that final product of morphine. And morphine is our, our pain relief. Really, it's not which form that we get it in. It, the body is going to process it pretty much the same. Law enforcement and addiction specialists say an attitude that drug addiction is a victimless crime is a pretty common reaction from the public when faced with the increasing heroin epidemic. That is, of course, until a person gets robbed or stolen from by an addict trying to feed their addiction, or of course, until they're stuck with a dirty needle while visiting the park. These are pictures taken by me on jogs around St. Joseph over the last year. It's what got me interested in this story to begin with. Shocked by the sheer number of carelessly discarded needles I found, I was sure I couldn't be the only one seeing them. And then this woman appeared on our news for a completely different story. I just went to go clean up an area of trash along the curb and they were loosely in the grass just along right next to the sidewalk. I've found them um, where my grandson lives. I've found them in the garden in that area in the alley. Brenda Riley works to restore homes in St. Joseph. She says she doesn't know a lot about intravenous drug use, but she's no longer shocked to find the remnants it leaves behind. They're usually along public pathways because I guess I guess people are using as they walk down the street. I don't really know how that works. That's exactly how it works. Drug abuse is not a victimless crime. You, you have the, the needles, the used needles that uh, get thrown out there. You have kids playing who could get stuck by a needle. A runner, you know, stops to do something, could get stuck by a needle. To me, I, I think your people who are diabetic, who are uh, taking care of themselves and treating themselves, they're not going to be the people throwing syringes out on the streets. So what's the answer? Why do this story? According to Sean Colley and Joe Zygmunt, it's to get the word out and then make strides in demanding a prescription drug monitoring program in Missouri, the only state in the U.S. without one. Each says if the problem starts with prescription drugs, then that's where stopping it has to start too. But it will take the work of average citizens who have had enough to make it happen. Um, that's something we have to have. Doctor shopping has been going on for, for quite a while. Um, and I think Missouri is the only state that doesn't have the PDMP, which would be a big help to help stop some of that. We're not going to ignore it either. You know, we want, we want to do our best to overcome it and, and find our way through this. For News Press Now, I'm Alex Flippin. Thank you, Alex.